What's up, everybody? It's easy. Doing another Clash of Clans video. The word of today is persistence. This is like take seven. Decided to do an, an early morning video, and it's not the, it doesn't work out very good for me. So if you hear um a lot, that's because I can't keep on restarting the video. <laughs> so this video, we ha we have a bunch of different attacks. We have some. We do have some clan war attacks in the last war. Unfortunately, I had a whole I had this whole big plan because we had a couple guys uh, six pack on a couple of accounts, and, and I really wanted to show all that. And then the update happened, and it took away all those replays. So sorry, sorry to those guys. Um, Michael Man was one of them that he just came out with a huge head of steam, uh, attacked, uh, used all of his attacks one right after another, and didn't just three star I mean he he three starred and and could have probably used the troops left over to three star the next attack which that would be a really cool clan perk I think <laughs> so anyway t speaking of the clan perks uh, after the update we were able to go into our social settings and see everyone else that's online so I decided to do that yesterday morning and noticed that we had 20 guys that I'm friends with that were online for about five minutes which is okay, but about five minutes right before work. So at 6.30 in the morning, if you're friends with Easy, go on to your social setting and check out everyone online. It's pretty amazing. So yeah, we can see everyone that's online that's in your friends list. And then on top of that, you can you can watch everyone else while they're playing. Now you know how, who's online. So if you're having a conversation with someone, you, you know when there's a third person listening in and laughing. <laughs> So, I, and I really like that. that. That's a feature that they had in Clash Royale that everyone loves so much. And we've been asking for it and asking for it. And, you know, that's got to be one of the cool things about this game. Is that when you ask for things, they listen and actually do it. I mean, how good, how good is that? <laughs> so, getting back to the video. This, this was Stalker's... I believe that he... This was actually his second attack. And on his first attack, I wanted to show his first attack too, but I couldn't because of the update. But if you notice, the base that he's attacking didn't have Inferno Towers. But this this clan that we fought, they didn't have all the elite defenses. But even their very last person in the lineup had, had maxed troops, maxed heroes, and maxed walls. And I think that's, if you haven't seen that yet, you, you're going to, uh, we're a level 14 clan, so we're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, these high power clans. And, and man, the walls and the heroes are, we're, we're seeing more and more of it that they may, they may not max out their defenses. They may not have all of the defenses the way they're supposed to, but they're getting matched up against our Town Hall 8s. So, so as, and I know that Supercell is working very hard to fix the engineered issues that people are complaining about but the, the harder they work this the harder the players will work to try to compensate for it so I don't know if that's ever gonna go away completely all right this attacks by flux is also it's also a slap uh, town hall 11 now this is not one of my favorite designs because look at town hall okay there's a square on town hall and that didn't stop the bowlers not for one second all that it did is made it to where they didn't have to break into that interior wall so they used max walls to surround town hall and it did absolutely nothing i don't know how many times the max walls around town hall has saved this base in the past but that didn't help at all so they just wasted the walls so my suggestion is is if you're going to put walls around town hall which you should if you're going to have town hall inside your walls and it's not an anti-3 which uh, by the way if you're a town hall 11 you really shouldn't have an anti-3 base uh, not not unless you're in a clan that has all town hall 11s and you're facing other clans that are all town hall 11 in that the three stars are going to be there's my damn alarm you know what that's right making a video before the alarm goes off yeah because if you if you're in a clan that has town hall 9s 10s and 11s and you're a town hall 11 you do an anti-3 base well now the town hall 9s can easily come up and two star you and in most cases in most cases most clans a two star is going to be good enough on the top couple guys 
So a couple do's and don'ts for Town Hall 11, uh, the war bases. Don't put your Town Hall on the outside of the walls. It's a bad idea in Town Hall 11. Again, you'll just be given opportunity to the other clan. Do put Town Hall in the center and the core and surround it by nothing. And that works so well. You're, during the war attack, they will, unless they funnel really well, they'll clear out all the defenses and they'll try to go to the core and they'll end up going around the base and you'll, you'll catch a lot of these 99%. It's amazing actually how often it happens. So it's a go always a good idea, uh, especially for Town Hall 11. I've noticed that the Town Hall 11s that have the, the well fortified, and I, I'd say it's the normal bases, uh, these good players are able to use the jump spells and, and maneuver their way through the base and all the defenses that, that are surrounding Town Hall are just leading the troops right to Town Hall. So I didn't, I never thought I would say that it's a good idea to make those types of bases, but it's been working really well for us, against us, all that. So this next attack is from Dave. Dave comes from a feeder clan. He is now Town Hall 8, learning a lot from the guys. So he's using the dragon attack, which is an expensive attack to use while he's farming, but we've always suggested to the guys that whatever attack you use in the war is the attack you want to use while you're farming. I just happened to catch a, a, a bunch of these videos that I saw and I, I started watching them and they were actually YouTubers that were from other genres that were doing Clash videos and I noticed they all had one thing in common, they were farming with barbarians and archers and yeah they were cheap armies and they were doing well, they were getting the loot from it but I'm sure it didn't help their war attack any. Matter of fact I'll give you a good example. I was using the Goblin Knife, which is uh, a, a kind of unique farming attack. And because I was having so much success with it, I ended up using Goblins in War. And, and it just kind of lowers your it, it lowers your guard when you start when you start having successful farm raids with the lower troops. And then you you know you you, you depreciate from your war attack. So use those war troops to farm with, even though it may be more expensive. Because if you're in a serious war clan, you should always be working on your attack. So by Dave using the dragons, he's actually improving his war attack every time he farms. Which is really important, especially when you're learning. He's a Town Hall 8, so he's got a long way to go still. And, uh, and, and with dragons, for everyone who's just starting out using dragons, they're not easy troops to control. So you need as many reps with it as you can get. So you want to use them as much as you possibly can. So now next one, let's see, the next one I believe was Weppa. No, this is Sable, okay. I'm trying to remember everything. My memory's terrible. Okay, so this is Sable, and uh, I wanted to show this attack because this is, I see this type of base way too much, and it's a classic mistake people make. What they did is they put all the defenses around the outside, and what they're hoping is that all the troops get beat up too much by the time they go around the outside. So by the time they get to the middle, that what little they have in the middle will be able to handle it. But if you see what I did, I just cleared, it's called the funnel, for those of you who don't know. You just clear out two corners, and that now there's nowhere for these balloons and, and all, these thing, all these troops to go except for to the core. So it, most attackers that have been playing for over a few months understand the concept of the funnel and how, and how to create one. So by loading up the core of your base with all of your resources and not really having any defenses layered in there with them, all that you're doing is, is giving it away. Because even if I didn't get 100% on the attack, I would have still been able to go and clear out the middle and get all the loot. So it's just, and all on top of that, this base is too tempting for me to attack. And something that I've said a lot, you want to split up all of your resources throughout the base. And a good way to picture this is, is cut your base in half and then in half again. So divide it into four quarters, four quadrants, and try to put 25% of each of, uh, of all your resources. So 25% of your gold, elixir, everything in each of those four parts of the base. And that, that will force the attacker to take 100% of your base in order to get 100% of your resources. That, that way if they get 55% on the attack, well they only got half of your resources. Okay, next one, this one, this one right here is what, but now he's again using a, a war attack in a farm raid. And what this allows him to do is he, he runs across a huge base. 
But if he had just farming troops, you know, your your typical archers and barbarians and, and goblins or whatever he would use, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been able to take the whole base like he did and get over a million of resources of I don't know I think it was five thousand dark elixir. So it's worth it. You you have to and now remember this too. Use the next button. Use it a lot. Don't settle for the first four or five bases that you come across. You may have to next forty times because I've done it. But then on on number base number forty one, you will find the the perfect base for you. Also, if you are trying to practice on specific bases, whether it be an island type base or whether it be just a, a popular base that you may have to go up against in in war, uh, keep on hitting the next button. You you you'll find all the you you can get all these different types of you can achieve all these different types of things by using the next button. You can get more loot. You can attack more diverse bases. So don't be afraid to hit the next button. You're not losing that much by nexting. It the it costs so little to next, and you can gain so much. So that's a really big point I wanted to make. I, I, we have a, a bunch of new players in the clan and I, I was trying to explain this to them and I think they get it now but I, I think it's something that's really common that, that it wasn't just our new guys it's all the new guys out there that they don't understand how important it is to next so we got some builder base now because because of all the different features you got you got builder hall 7 we can now do friendly attacks in the builder hall which what this really means for anyone anyone that doesn't know the, the the way all this works is once you can do friendly attacks you can create leagues you can create tournaments and now we can add a bunch of different features to the builder base and we knew this was going to happen we, we heard about this from the start that this feature was going to kind of be the the inlet or it's going to open the door to esports and for people that don't know esports they are team-based video games where you'll have literally you'll have professional players that that create teams for all these different games and they'll go go head to head with each other so it's looking like clash is is on the way to uh, their their first esport type of thing uh, in clash of clans they already have it going on in, in clash royale and they have for a while and i think that's one of the pop one of the reasons why it's so popular is the head-to-head -head type of competition it's also why it pisses me off so bad <laughs> So getting back to the attack, this is the baby dragon cannon card attack. I had been using primarily baby dragons, had maxed out baby dragons at every builder hall level, but once you get into builder hall five, it's a lot harder to use mass baby dragons, uh, regardless of the techniques you use. I was I was using them every different way, and yes, I could still three star some bases, but just because of the design and how well people were able to defend defend against the baby dragons started using the cannon cart and I kind of used the cannon cart behind uh, I used the, the hero to tank form and you you have to pick key locations to take out some of the air defenses so if they have the the balloons whatever the hell the air def the balloon defense <laughs> you know I suck for not knowing everything all the names but that's what, always where I'll start off and the the cannon cart has such a great range that you can put the hero on and as he's trying to chop through the wall they'll literally get behind him and take out whatever's on the other side of that wall uh, and I, I wanted to show this too right there I believe is all of the building blocks for the flying machine which we've seen in Clash Royale which is actually a pretty cool uh, piece in Clash Royale which we don't know but might be coming to Clash of Clans I know that we're gonna have a lot of integration between for the master builder and a lot of uh, it opens the door for a lot of new types of troops that have mechanical aspects to them so expect to see more of that <clears throat> okay so here's a second look at what we're calling the Braganon not to be confused with bring it on although it makes sense but the Braganon so Brags baby dragons and the cannon cart and so you, you see the area that, that we're tackling right away going right for the strongest parts of the air defense and as the hero he's gonna go around because he's pulled by the by the closest piece on the outside of the wall they're gonna start shooting over the walls and take out all these all these different trash building defenses on the other side of the walls the one thing you have to be careful of well I didn't even expect that at all one thing you have to be careful of is the multi mortar I believe I, I do believe that it's one round from the multi mortar and you're immobilized so be mindful of where the multi mortars range is 
and if you have to if you have to allow the hero to take several volleys from the multi mortar before you can get close enough to it to where you can either a take it out or or be distracted to where it's not on uh, you know not on the on the cannon cart that you want to destroy the air defenses cuz th the main part of this army is still the baby dragons they're going to be the ones that take out the majority of the base but you have to take out these key defenses with the cannon carts and the key defenses being the you know the blue balloon thing whatever it's called <laughs> and also the 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 roaster because those two they do they do a ton of damage to, to the baby dragons so and it's also a good idea and, and you know i've noticed that who's three star me is not the baby dragons at all it's that's actually most of the time if i catch the, the tail end of an attack it's usually the bombers and which i've tried and you'll, you haven't seen a, a bomber replay yet because i'm terrible at it So I wanted to end the video by just giving everyone a heads up of what's going on with the website, with the YouTube channel. Had a, had a great response on the YouTube channel, so keep the subs coming. I really appreciate it. Uh, just blown away by by the response we got. Uh, also, the website it's www.clashmadeeasy.com. It's a huge Clash of Clans guide. It's got every troop, every defense. It's got all a bunch of different types of guides to help out especially the, the new players on how to up, uh, upgrade the base the differences between all the different styles like the 0.5 method and the dirty rotten engineered method which we don't actually help anyone do we discourage <laughs> but uh, go check it out uh, I know that people use the wikia and I'm just my point of view is the wikias are nothing like the websites that are built by individuals the wikias are like this mass produce things by everyone so check it out www.clashmadeeasy.com i appreciate everyone for watching uh enjoy making the video hope you enjoyed watching it till next time it's been easy take care everybody Yeah.